Well, I'm sorry, but there's no avoiding it today. We need to talk about money. We heard of the old woman who gave all that she had, even though it was merely two small coins. Um, At other times of the year, we might have been able to dodge past this and talk about something else, but today we need to hit this head on because we have some major fundraising coming up in the near future. Uh, We're gonna hear Mark Higgins, our uh, Chair of Finance Council, speak on our stewardship campaign next week. That's a thing we do every year. Uh, And in a month or so, the Love One Another Capital Campaign is going to begin. And that is going to be a major thing, and we are all expected to take part to the best of our ability. The good news there, by the way, is that over half of the money raised in the campaign is going to come right back to us and be used for renovations at Sacred Heart and St. Matthew's. So there's definitely good news in the mix there. So that means that this week is something of a mental warm-up. We are supposed to look at this kindly woman as our role model of generosity and trust. She gave what she had, and she didn't complain or worry, and that's the spirit of true generosity. What this is really about is something you have heard time and time again, most often around Christmas. Sharing is caring. Tis better to give than to receive. Feel free to add whatever cliches you want. It's a very long list. Uh, And by the way, it is okay to call those phrases cliches. Cliches tend to be overused a bit, but they are almost always true, even if only partly true. A penny saved is a penny earned. So when it comes to giving to the church or charitable organizations, We are not talking as if salvation can be bought. That is not the idea. Catholics in particular have fallen into that trap in the past. The idea that we can somehow buy off God. No, I'm sorry, that does not happen. It's a bit of a tangent, I admit, but uh, one quote I really love on that subject. The saying goes, So many of us try to cut a deal with God for one reason or another, But the problem is that God is a very shrewd businessman. And if you don't offer him that which is most important to you, he's just not interested. I think there's something to that. But anyway, when we talk about tithing, giving to the church, being generous, it is not about buying our salvation. It's about sacrificing our personal resources for the benefit of others. And that is a basic understanding of Christ, an expectation of Christ. It is the heart of the gospel today. We are called to care for others as if they're more important than ourselves. Last week, those of you that came to church last week, my homily was all about loving God with your whole soul and with all your strength. Do you by chance remember the entire quote from the gospel Because I confess, my homily only covered the first part. Love your God with all your soul and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Those two things are interconnected. And that forms the foundation of our spirit of giving. We are talking about doing something concrete and real for the sake of our community and one another. That means we put our money where our mouth is. Sorry, that's another cliche. Those are everywhere. I realize that. But we do need to put our money where our mouth is. It's not wrong. Have you seen those bumper stickers around? Um, So they say, uh, I I don't believe I've seen this in Horicon. I see this when I go to Milwaukee. Uh, So the bumper sticker says, thoughts and prayers. And those those words are crossed off. And then underneath them it says, uh, action and legislation. So these bumper stickers are attempting to belittle faith. Faith is meaningless. Prayers are worth nothing. It's politicians who will save us. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll tell you the truth. Whenever I see those bumper stickers, I'm not offended. I'm annoyed because it's disrespectful, but I'm not offended because those bumper stickers do not attack a true Christian attitude. They only attack a platitude-heavy stereotype of faithful people as if we pray for the suffering 
and refuse to do anything else. I am sorry, but in my experience, that is very plainly untrue. Genuine Christians pray for the suffering, but they also get their hands dirty whenever they can. I, I have every reason to believe that a genuine Christian is more likely to be giving and, and willing to work in addition to whatever prayers they offer. Thoughts and prayers are good. We should offer thoughts and prayers whenever we can for those who are suffering. That is nothing to be ashamed of. But is there not something else we can do as well in those situations? Can we help with our own two hands? Can we make a donation of our personal resources? Can we simply offer our time and energy and be with people in their hour of suffering? Because that last possibility, by the way, that is nothing less than what Jesus asked of his disciples, which they didn't succeed at very well. Can't you stay awake with me for one hour? The point is, we are meant to aid one another. That has always been a part of the human experience, and it's a major part of why we have these little things called society and civilization. You know, no big deal there, right? I mean, it's not like civilization has done anything for us recently. That was sarcasm, by the way. Generosity and charitable giving are expressions of human solidarity and civilization itself. And solidarity and civilization are things that require participation. Participation is what makes it real. And when someone refuses to participate, well, everyone else is lessened as a result. Not really the leaders, not really the people that are more visible members of the community. In reality, it's the people that don't get much of the spotlight in the first place. They're the ones that endure more suffering when participation wavers. The big idea here, it boils down to a very simple question. What sort of community are we really? How are we prepared to live the gospel in truth and faith? Are we selfless people like the woman in the gospel? Or are we going to protect our own personal interests above all else? We all have to answer that question on our own. So I'm going to conclude with a little section of the book Rebuilt, which is about revitalizing Catholic parishes. Uh, and this is from the chapter, Don't Rob God. I love that chapter title. It gets the attention. Yeah, you shouldn't rob God. Anyway, here's what they say. Mismanagement of personal finances and debt are serious sources of stress in many people's lives. People aren't just swimming in a sea of materialism. They're drowning in it. We had to start somewhere, so we decided to start with ourselves. Giving to God first forced us to place every other expense after our offering. And both of us can honestly say that after we started tithing, we found ourselves eliminating debt and building savings. And then later, near the end of the chapter, they write, Worship is the act of giving value to something. And that's true. We worship and give value to something by offering our time, talent, and treasure. You've heard those three words before. And essentially, essentially, there are two appropriate ways to worship and give value. Love the Lord with all your strength and with all your soul. And two, love your neighbor as yourself. When you give your time, talent, and treasure to God and or the betterment of your neighbor, then you are truly building up the kingdom of heaven with your own two hands. And that makes you a true disciple in spirit and in truth.